Oh, hey there, how's it going, guys? I was just on dusting my camera, I haven't made a video in a while, you know, it was a lot of dust there, but how's it going, guys? Welcome to another video, hopefully, I mean, hopefully, are you hyped or are you hyped, guys? Come on, classic is coming, right? Vanilla is coming, the fucking air smells on vanilla. Anyway, guys, I have compiled a list of 13, why is that 4? 13 tips, how to make your classic launch smooth how to make your leveling experience smooth and beyond that a lot of things with my guildmates of classic mil guildmates the future classic guildmates and the friends of mine i have made this list and guys i don't want to make this video one hour so let's begin first thing first the shortest one of all the tips in the world it's one of the most obvious one as well the time of the launch of the game right if you don't know, there is a countdown on the World of Warcraft website, I'm gonna link in the description, you can watch the countdown, plan your obligation, cancel your wife, throw away your kids, everything, and prepare yourself for classic launch, right? So there will be a countdown there, if you want to watch it, check it out, link in the description. Number two, name reservations are still available, so if you want to reserve your name, it's still you can do that, but guys, one tip between the tips is that a lot of people are actually changing servers because Blizzard is incentivizing those things by saying, yo guys, this server will not launch if you continue multiply yourself on this server. So move away from here, go to another server. That means that your name might have been unreserved or might have been deleted. So check out in the next couple of days, maybe your name is back. Maybe you can still reserve your name. A lot of people are deleting their chars on that server. So check out that stuff. That's number two. Number three, a lot of guilds are recruiting as well you can check the guild recru uh, recruitment pages on the forums on blizzard if you want to find yourself a guild that will provide you some support it will provide you some friends it will provide you some help and all that stuff while leveling it's very useful to have a guild while leveling in vanilla because a lot of things will not be easily soloable so asking guild chat yo guys anyone is doing this quest soon or something wanna group up you can do that stuff also a lot of server discords are being launched like for example i'm gonna be playing on europe horde hydraxian uh warlords that's how the server is uh, called surprisingly so that is a server that I'm going to play and I'm going to link the that server discord into the description below but for all any other server that you are going to play uh, playing on it's uh, very easy to google up the name of the discord and find the discord uh, link to that server it's very useful to be on those discords because also you can group up with other people from there you can uh, you know kind of report people for misbehaving and also you can see the ratio <laughs> you can see the ratio between the Alliance and Horde uh, and decide, you know, what side you want to be on or something like that. I don't know, like, it's useful. those are useful inf information and input to have, right? That's number three. Number four, it's how to avoid the queue time. Especially if you're on high population server, the queue times probably will be very strong. So you're gonna have to wait a lot of numbers to go down in order to log into your server. So what is useful to know about this, something that I didn't know but I saw a blue post the other day. Uh, linked in our guild discord that uh, blizzard uh, have said that you can stay logged into the game like right now you can actually log into classic right name reserve and stuff you cannot click enter world button but in a couple days when the launch starts or before it starts that gray button of enter world be will become yellow and will be become clickable when that timer goes to zero so basically you can stay in the lobby there and wait for the server to come so you can actually log in like two hours before i think they said that there will be like restarts in the meantime and stuff like that so i don't know when that those restarts will stop and when the actual stable release of classic lobby will be but you can try you know like one hour before that half an hour before the launch stay in the lobby move with your keyboard around there a little bit or with your mouse try to see some classes try to make some really ugly female dwarf whatever you can make and stay in your lobby it's very useful stuff to know of course uh number five it's talking about servers right guys from the beginnings of my journeys in World of Warcraft, I've always had better experience starting while leveling, of course. Talking to, Here we're talking about leveling. While leveling, I always started uh, on a low population server because, of course, you have less competition on, uh, you know, on the mobs that you're trying to kill. They're not sharing mobs and stuff in vanilla, so, you know, having less competition to fight for the mobs that you want to kill is a lot more uh, <coughs> beneficial to you when you're leveling, so you don't have to wait. And also... You're gonna get ganked less uh, and all that, but 
generally on a uh, lower population server out of my experience have low uh, less crashes less legs uh, less server world down things and stuff so just stick to the low population server if it doesn't matter to you that much what server you're going to go on now if you want to uh, later if you want to server transfer something you can still reserve your name on a high population server right now and then start on low population server and whenever you're ready at level 60 or something if you're one of those guys that has 20 or 25 euros to spend the server transfers will be available so you can actually server transfer from one server to another and when you finish that delete your chart that you was keeping your name server transfer to the to the server that you want easy peasy right you can do that stuff as well if you have of course 20 or 25 euros but for leveling lower population server is better and also if you don't want to get ganked this is probably like common uh, sense and stuff but rp servers are better than pvp servers or uh, pve servers are better than pvp servers so uh that is that stuff now as number six i want to talk about add-ons you know add-ons are very very important stuff in vanilla classic because not many features you have right you don't have like you cannot see the other people cast bars you cannot see other people like name frames buffs and all that on them so you need add-ons, right? I mean, you don't need to, but it's useful to have because it will improve your experience. If you want to have classic add-ons, let me give you a tip that I didn't knew this before. Uh, Future Punk or Oli uh, gave me the other day a tip on this. So if you go on your Twitch application, click on the cogwheel button, the top right corner, you can uh, add a game, right? And if you go to your World of Warcraft server and select, it's the retail folder in your World of Warcraft folder, select the classic, it will add another game in your Twitch application that will be the classic game. By that, you have the option of searching for add-ons uh, before the, uh, the game launches, research them, see what add-ons you want, see what you want to get from the game as add-ons and stuff very useful add-ons like tsm for example trade skill master and uh, auctioner auctionator and all those add-ons are still uh, are working for tsm there are tips that you can read on trade skill master website but i just want to mention that tsm will be available and also a lot of uh, other add-ons that are uh, that were not available back in days you, you can also use them in classic vanilla so that is number six number seven is this is very useful while uh, leveling guys I've always done this it's always very useful to, st to do this I think I've done this since the burning crusade uh, that that's when I've made my first banker which was named Voynik so m make a bank alt you know make one level one whatever name alt just make sure it's easy name so you don't really misspell the, the things and also get yourself an add-on uh, something like uh, Postal or something so you can add multiple items into the mailbox why I say make a bank out because because you're gonna level a lot right and you're gonna see that uh, that text on top of your screen inventory is full inventory is full inventory is full if you don't want to see that stuff of course whenever you see a mailbox you go to the mailbox you mail all the things that you don't not need like cloth uh, green items gems and all that stuff that you do not need like quest items you need of course but everything that you do not need mail to your bank alt later whenever you go to train skills or whatever to the city just log out instantly log into your bank alt check out what you have for auction house check out what you need in your main send the back uh, back what you what you need and you know auction the rest of it it's very useful stuff i've been always using it use it trust me it will help save times of you a lot anyway number eight professions now this is uh, a thing that is probably will take the most time of this video maybe not the most but anyway it deserves a separate video for it but i will try to summary down to one minute tip right so the most important stuff about professions is to get yourself first aid and cooking on the start because if you're a caster or something like that you have healing you don't need first aid as much but first aid is very important especially in warriors rogues and stuff like that that do not have healing and hunters of course as well you know make your pet tank go disengage GG. Anyway, cooking for a state. All the meat, all the cloth, everything you get, dump into those professions. You don't need cloth, you don't need uh, nothing on start, unless you get tailoring, which we're gonna talk later. Uh, cooking for a state as soon as you get to trainer, learn them. S uh, second thing, primary professions. The first combo that I find extremely useful, especially if you're in a PvP uh, realm, and you're gonna get ganked a lot, level 20, 30, 40, uh, and, and so on, is to get engineering mining while leveling you know it, it, while leveling is not all about gold making we're gonna talk about a little bit about gold making but it's not about gold making it's about having smooth experience with the least graveyard runs as possible so engineering can help you while leveling um 
to stun mobs, to stun someone against you, for example, roll comes at you, cheap shot, kidney shot, he didn't finish, you throw grenade at him, run like hell, and you, sometimes you're gonna survive, most of the times actually you're gonna survive just because you have like those kind of profession thing, uh, things like trinkets, bombs, explosives and stuff that you can do with engineering are very very helpful for the mobs that you're fighting and also for people that are trying to gank you, especially if, if you're on a PvP server. The second pair of profession I'm gonna say uh, as well comparable to uh, engineering is alchemy and herbalism. Why? Because a lot of herbs you're gonna meet that will be next to you, right? So why not pick them up? You know, pick up, make something out of your alchemy, with, uh, whether it will be like fortitude potion, uh, elixir or something like that will increase your health. It will make you take more damage. Or armor elixir, it will make you take more damage. Uh, and it will, I mean, it will make you survive more damage, let's say, so Also, like, uh, mana pods, healing pods, all that stuff, it will help you a lot Also, you have later, uh, in the later levels, you have, like, free action potions, swiftness potion, water walking potions, swimming potions Cloud potions, sun potions, gut potions, you have a lot of potions, right? So, you get my point They will help you, uh, for example, free action potion Gets uh, gets you out of all the CC, right? So, <laughs> rogue stuns you or, or saps you or whatever. I actually do not remember all the effects of free action potion. It should read up a, a lot more about that. But anyway, you have some elixirs like that or actually potions that are uh, removing all the movement input eff effects from you. So, it will help you while getting ganked or while fighting a lot of mobs to survive more and stuff like that. Alchemy, herbalism, number two. Number three, and that uh, this is the last one I'm gonna say. This is... For casters mostly, you know, every time I leveled my priest or mage, I started as, in vanilla as a rogue, I met Undercity, I deleted the rogue, I made priest, right? So, the priest and paladin were the first class that I've leveled in vanilla, and priest, um, when I leveled priest, I couldn't find one up to level 15, and also I've done a lot of private server testing back in days, and I had the same issue. V ones are very hard to ca come by, so if you're a caster like mage, priest, Mage and priest, basically. So, if you're a major priest and you need a wand, you cannot find a wand uh, until level 12 or level 15, I think. When you get to Rage Fire Chasm, I think there is one wand. There is also, like, in Welling, ca Welling Caverns or something. Another wand from that fairy dragon. So, the first wands you're getting in a dungeon, or if you're a really, really lucky person, you might get it while leveling from some random mob. Some really lucky one, but that rarely happens. If you want to be on a safe side and not die because you do not have one, why I say die? Because here's what happens sometimes you're a caster, you pull like one of those humanoids or something in Barrens or in Westfall or something, uh, those pig guys or whatever, and you kill them and they stay on 20% and they're next to you, you're safe and stuff, but he starts running away and how are you gonna ki finish him off? You are, you're low on mana, you spent your mana, you have nothing, no, no way to kill him, well, one man. But if you do not have one, you cannot do that, so of course, uh, enchanting tailoring, you get yourself cloth, you funnel all that into tailoring, you get yourself the first green items from tailoring that you can craft, which is, I think, white, um, white linen robe or something, I think it was like that. You get yourself that, you craft as, much, as many as you can of that, you disenchant all that stuff, you get uh, magic essence, you get sp uh, strange dust, with all of that uh, thing you can level up your uh, enchanting, I think, to level 10 or 15 when you get your first one with enchanting, and that is on level 4 or 5 you can get actually your first one, which will save your life insanely much, trust me. And also, if you're a priest, for example, like I did, spirit top, you get the uh, first five levels into spirit top, finish people with wand. It, uh, it's not considered as casting, your mana regeneration starts as soon as you start hitting with the wand or something, or five seconds after the last spell. All these things. Anyway, that's all about professions, guys. I don't want to make this too long. So, let's move on. Uh, number nine. While you're leveling, you get quest items with very unique elements to them. Like, for example, School of Pending Doom, for example. That does damage to you to increase your speed or give you a, a little bit of sprint. These items are very handy, especially in like PvP servers or something, because uh, you can get, get out, uh, use of them to get out of much shit, you know, like for example, you see that some mage is casting polymorph on you, use the skull of pe pending doom, it does damage to you, meaning it breaks your, your ship, and you can just go and charge on that guy and just fuck him up, right? So, 
a lot of the quest items you really need to be mindful of and be thoughtful and creative a bit and use them in the right way and also do not vendor all the quest items especially if it says some unique uh, things on them have a wow head on, on your second monitor open and check out all the items that you're getting from quests and stuff and while you're looting and, and all that that probably uh, it, we will make your life a lot easier because you're gonna learn the game and, and everything as well So that is number nine. Just be mindful of all the quest rewards that you're getting. They're very handy Especially some of those unique stuffs uh, number ten What right? Yeah number ten gold is very import uh, important important uh, in vanilla compared to retail so uh, it is smart for some stuffs uh, that are, you know, not that, that much worth to you or not a really big upgrade. Just send them to a bank uh, alt, right? Especially if you have like uh, leggings, for example, you're a warrior and you have leggings already for, for, for strength, for stamina. And you get uh, leggings that will give you 5 strength, 4 stamina and 1 strength, right? It's nothing, basically. I mean, it is something, but it's not that much uh, upgrade. But if you post that on auction... Uh, on those low levels when no one actually posting stuffs on auction and you're one of those few people that are using the auction on low levels All of those people that are trying to maximize their characters in, all, in order to tank dungeons turbo runs or Going for world first and stuff. They will pay, pay some serious gold for that, those things, you know, like five gold ten golds I've been selling some shields for level seven or something for 10 15 gold or something, you know, you get five gold on level five you train all the skills with that gold up to level 30 or something right all right not 30 but 20 for sure so that five gold will buy a lot of other things consumables uh, skills all these things that you know griffin rides and all that so make sure to uh, not be greedy about the items, especially the ones that are not really really huge upgrade to your uh, characters But for many people will actually mean a lot uh, on auction house and also they will pay some serious amount of gold to get uh, Their hands of those items that you do not need as much So just make sure to check out, you know, mail them to your uh, bank account whenever you get some of those like daggers and all that stuff are very very uh, worth so just Keep an eye on those things as well number 11. This is one of the most important when it comes to vanilla trust me uh, number 11 is do not be a dick. Uh, what I say by this is uh, Don't be those don't don't misbehave guys don't ninja loot don't swear to people spit to people or stuff like that You know it's vanilla is a very closed micro world uh, Where people know each other there is no f there are no flying mounds So you're probably gonna meet all of the people eventually uh, on your adventures. So in vanilla Everyone will know everyone at some point and Once you get blacklisted once people start hating you or something you misbehave one or you start ninjaing or something People start mentioning you in discords and stuff. I know some people would like that fame or something I know people are distorted sometimes, but anyway, don't be one of those guys try to be on the polite side because you're gonna have a lot more pleasant experience you're gonna have a lot more friends you're gonna have a lot bigger community supporting you keeping your back safe than being one of those lonely guys that wants to be a special snow, snow, uh, snowflake by being like hated or something. It's better in vanilla to be uh, l loved or basically appreciated than being hated. Trust me, I've, I've seen that stuff. I've had a lot of friends uh, in vanilla turned into those special snowflake kind of, type of types of guys. And it's not ending up successful for you. So just try to not be a dick. Be polite. You don't have to like go and lick people's fingers or whatever. But... Just don't be a dick to people, you know, just be a normal guy. If you can help someone, help, of course, and if you don't, you don't have to, like, even reply, but don't be a dick, right? Uh, that's the uh, 11th. Now, number 12, avoid add-ons that are communicating with each other. I should have probably mentioned this earlier, I don't know why it's number 12, but avoid those add-ons. There are some add-ons, like, uh, that will help you locate some people or some things or uh, looking for group add-ons. I've heard that there will be, like fucking looking for raid or something we're trying to avoid that from retail and now you install an add-on that is like doing the same stuff basically don't install those add-ons guys they will be blocked by blizzard anyway i think blizzard announced that in some blue post that uh add-ons that are communicating in each other in a malicious way uh especially those things that are helping locate players or something or whatever those things just do not uh because your loading screens will be slower your frame rates will be lower and you're gonna end up not having any use of those things. So just, you know, try to avoid those add-ons. Uh, it helps the community a lot as well, you know. It, don't break the community, guys. It's actually nice thing. So, uh, that is number 12. Number 13, and this is the last one. If you plan on playing Classic mostly, uh, make sure to liquidate everything you have on retail right now. Because the gold you're gonna need later for tokens or something. And, uh... When people switch to classic slowly, you know, some people will still be stubborn and be like, no, I will not play classic, I'll stick to retail, I will never try classic. 
eventually when the when the hype reach them when they go out and people are tell telling them when their friends don't do not stop talking oh man in classic we actually went into 40 men fucking raid or something so fun so good or something they will get into the hype bag uh, b wagon and they will come back so as soon as the game starts losing like retail starts losing those uh <clears throat> how can i say like players core players or something of uh of retail you're gonna have difficulty selling those materials on auction calls so make sure to liquidate all the things or sell all the things that you have right now especially consumables and stuff that are so easy sell sell them before the classic comes or you know while the launch is, is happening or something because later you're gonna have some difficulty selling those things or if you want you can try to sell them slower later and uh, maybe sell them for uh, less gold because there will be less competition but also less buyers to buy, uh, buy them so if you have like one million flasks crafted make sure to sell them in, in fast as possible because later you know there will be no million people there to be selling those flasks too so that's one uh number 13 and of course it wouldn't be a guide and list of uh, things if i didn't have a bonus tip so buy tokens now if you have to this is the bonus tip buy tokens now if you have to because the price will go up this is my own prediction i haven't read it anywhere it's like basic economic principle in my head right so how that works is currently a lot of people are actually buying i mean not a lot but people are actually buying right now uh tokens from the store in order to sell an auction house to get gold for those tokens right so Later, when people are not playing as much classic, not that many people will buy, uh, will use money to buy a token from the store to sell it on auction house to get gold from that token. Why? Because they will not play that. Not many that many people will play retail as they play now. So, what will happen is actually it will happen uh, happen t turnaround. A lot of people will try to buy tokens for gold in order to continue their adventures in classic. So, that will get us into a situation where. You know, people like 100 people w would would like to buy, for example, from auction house a lot of tokens for uh, for gold in order to buy game time, but like 20 people will buy uh, store tokens in order to get gold. So what will happen? System here we, we here will try to like um, how can I say balance out the price and will increase the price in order to incentivize more more people to buy tokens for money in order to uh you know in order to provide the token to all these people that want to buy game time so that's how the system works and that's how actually economy works you know the demand supply demand price all that balances each other so i think this is how it will happen so if you have some gold saved up for tokens or something buy one or two now you don't have to like go 10 or something and my prediction doesn't work and you'll be like oh man you fucked me up i spent all my gold now the token is 30 gold just try to buy one or two now i think my predictions are correct because they always are especially when it comes to token price except once but most of the times i, I predict correctly and uh, if you if you want to uh get yourself some tokens for some of the later uh, stages of the game when the tokens will go higher in price just buy it now trust me it might be worth it might not that's why i say buy one or two not ten so anyway that is all i want to say guys in this video uh, i want to mention as well that uh, this list we have been compiled with friends of mine and guildies from classic hijacking waterlord horde europe is the, our server if you want to join up uh to, to the guild uh there will be a guild for pvp and pv and also a lot of world pvp and a lot of uh, grinding farming reputation farming all that stuff we're gonna help each other uh stick together as a brotherhood there will be no strict rules like there will be no like okay you have to be online here or there or something you can play as much as you want you can you know it's up to you there will be no strict rules so make sure to if you want to join the guild check out the twitch.tv slash on the launch day i'm going to as soon as we create the guild i'm going to post the discord of the guild in the twitch chat in the youtube videos and all that stuff if you want to join the guild you can check that stuff as well so i will be streaming of course if you want follow the the twitch and also i want to say thanks to all the brothers and sisters on patreon supporting our channel here i have not been done videos as much as i want to guys because i had some stuff issues vacations and stuff i want to make on my real life channel a video on why i i've been off for like one month and a half or something and i'm going to cover all that stuff on there but i want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart guys for all this the, your support uh, on on discord on patreon on everywhere basically you guys are amazing you guys are awesome love you much no homo and another bro fist until the next time stay cool listen to your parents guys see you on the uh classic and don't go hard on that vanilla ice cream anyway see ya umren off